Thank you very much everyone for coming and looking at this presentation. My name is Patrick Walschegel and I'm in charge of the HPC Software Development Tools uh, for ARM. And I wanted to give a small update to you about the kind of things that ARM is doing, uh, the ecosystem, the open source ecosystem available on ARM, and answer any question that you might have. So for those of you who don't know ARM, ARM is, uh, is a big company. Um, that provides intellectual property. So the way that ARM works is that we provide some IP that silicon manufacturers such as Marvel, Fujitsu, Qualcomm and others can reuse in order to do microprocessors. So ARM today is a major actor in the world. Uh, there's a very good chance that on your mobile phone you have some, you have some ARM microprocessors and ARM is using HPC to make a big push in the infrastructure segment. So today, a lot of my ARM-based micro, ARM microprocessors are already available in switches, routers, stuff like that. And we're working, we are working very, very hard to make sure that uh, ARM IP is also available on, ARM, uh, on CPUs and servers. So if you want to, uh, a, a small idea about how ARM works, you can see ARM as some sort of creator of pizza, right? So basically the way it works is that we can give you a recipe to build your pizza, which means that you can take the recipe and build your own pizza, or we will give you a frozen pizza that you just reheat and in order to manufacture a processor. And with this business model, basically, ARM is more and more present and you will see things like this happening in the market. So this is a picture of a recent announcement uh, by Amazon where AMD provides some processors, Intel provides some processors and Amazon uses ARM IP in order to provide some processors such as the Graviton. So this is just the beginning. You've probably seen at Supercomputing a few announcements. Uh, Fujitsu has been able to run the A64FX and they've had some very very good results. This is an ARM-based processor that Fujitsu has manufactured and it is number one on the Green 500 which is one of the announcements that uh, has been made uh, for this event. So in the HPC space, uh, we've got already quite a lot of deployments and people who are kicking the tires and using ARM as part of their production systems. Uh, our key flagship partners in HPC are Marvel and Fujitsu. So Marvel has a processor called the Thunder X2, uh, which is actually available on uh, a Catalyst program which is done by HP. So the Catalyst program which is a collaboration with SUSE, actually, um, is basically three data centers that have ARM supercomputers uh, with HP and the entire software stack in order to run HPC simulations um, and to produce science. So these projects are very successful and more and more supercomputing centers are embracing ARM hardware. So to, put, to support these deployments, ARM is very active throughout the entire open source and also uh, commercial ecosystem. So we work at a high level on applications and containers, we work on, we work on middleware such as your MPI stacks for instance. We also work on the entire tool chain, uh, whether we talk about compilers and libraries and obviously we work with operating system partners such as SUSE in order to make sure that the whole entire stack can, can work on these systems. So today, the software stack is quite mature and I'm going to share with you the kind of things that we've been doing and what is available if you were to buy an ARM supercomputers with SUSE on top. So our trajectory in terms of development is really to make sure that we provide open source and commercial software. So our mission is really to make sure that the architecture is enabled. So for instance, if a manufacturer uh, releases an SV hardware. SV is an instruction set uh, for vector instructions. And we want to make sure that all the compilers out there, all the OSs will support uh, this instruction set. Uh, we provide also some optimizations to specific cores. So typically if you're using uh, your typical BLAS or LAPAX, you want to have good performance on ARM hardware. So we will also provide some uh, arch architecture enablement and tuning uh, for the software stack. Uh, we work on performance, we work on new features, uh, typically things that are not necessarily present um, in mathematical libraries on ARM, such as sparse matrix multiplications. We will work on this and we bring new and new features, uh, such as OpenMP5, uh, in order to make sure that everything works for everyone. So our strategy is 
where possible, we contribute to the open source projects. We have some commercial products uh, that I'm going to describe in a minute, which are commercially supported and which includes the latest and greatest uh, features. And as soon as usually NDAs are lifted or that the community accepts our changes, everything that we do goes back to the open source community. So we're very keen on enabling other partners and a lot of the work that we do actually benefits other vendors such as Intel and AMD because they will get access to the things that we, we, we implement. So the software development tools that we provide and we sell as ARM are basically divided into two parts. So we've got a code generation aspect, which is what we call the ARM compiler for Linux. And that includes a compiler for C, C++, Fortran codes, and also mathematical libraries. <laughs> we also work on a performance engineering side of things, which is Forge, uh, formerly known as the, the Alinea tools, if, you, if you're aware of Alinea. And basically, these, these tools are actually completely cross-platform. You can use them on an ARM-based system, you can use them on an Intel, you can use them with NVIDIA GPUs, completely architecture agnostic. And when we bundle this solution together, we've got one package which is called ARM Alinea Studio, which includes the entire toolkit, the entire tool chains, uh, and that package is commercially supported for our users. So if we look a bit about the ARM compiler for Linux, uh, I'm going to focus on the tool chain and the ecosystem uh, from now on. So basically, the key advantage of the ARM compiler for Linux, which usually comes as standard with any ARM-based uh, supercomputer, is that it provides performance, it is, uh, it is commercially supported, which means that if you've got any issue, an application doesn't compile, or you don't get you know, uh, some performance or whatever, uh, you can rely on the ARM support team in order to help fix these issues and make sure this works. Uh, and this is one advantage that you would get over the traditional LLVM where you have to rely on a community, a community. Here you're certain to have access to a professional team of engineers in order to resolve these problems. The other thing is that this includes uh, performance optimizations that have not been upstream. So typically if you want to have something optimized for an A64FX, you will have it first in the ARM compiler for Linux before seeing it in the open source, uh, in the open source world. So the technology that we use uh, in order to do our compiler is open source. Uh, so we use, as a front end, we use Clang and Flang. So there are currently efforts uh, alongside NVIDIA and AMD and others uh, to switch uh, the Flang uh, front end to the new F18. Uh, which is a brand new Fortran for, front, uh, for Fortran codes. Uh, so we've started to work on this and we will migrate over time uh, to this new technology. Uh, as a backend, our, profile, our compiler sorry, supports ARM V8, which is a traditional ARM architectures, uh, but we've also added SVE and now SVE2 backend uh, to generate codes that are vectorized uh, for the architectures that are coming out now and also the future microarchitectures that you can expect in the market. So. Everything that we do for the ARM compiler for, for HPC, uh, for Linux, is actually, um, especially around SV, goes back into the open source projects. So here is a small map uh, of the, the work that we're doing in SV and SV2 uh, regarding the assembly, uh, the, the inline assembly, the C language extension, auto vectorization, etc. So in green, you've got what is already available. And in orange is what is currently work in progress and being streamed in the open source uh, in the open source project. So what you can see here is that basically the commercial solution that we've got is a bit in advance compared to the, the rest of the open source projects. Uh, but obviously everything uh, will be will be going back to the to the community. So one thing that people don't necessarily know is that ARM is actually a major contributor of GNU. Uh, and if we look at the number of commits and line of codes uh, that have been changed in 2017, 2018, uh, we haven't a number for 2018 yet because it's not over yet, uh, but ARM is actually number two uh, contributor uh, of this project. So very often we have people who tell us, hmm, why is the GNU compiler going faster than LLVM? Right, you, do, you need to work harder on LLVM. They'll say, well, actually we've done a good job because we also optimize GNU. We also ship GNU as part of ARM Alinea Studio and we also provide best effort support. So if you have um, our solution and you use GNU with it, uh, and you find some issues, we will also try to resolve your problems with GNU. And the investment of ARM on the GNU project is not going to go anywhere because this benefits obviously the infrastructure segment, but it also benefits other actors um, in the mobile segments and other areas. So basically using, you know, if you look at the results of 
uh, past and uh, future versions of GNU. So there is here a small graph that compares the, the performance of GNU 9 versus GNU uh, well, GCC 5. And you can see that we've brought substantial performance improvements on ARM v8 uh, and obviously we'll continue to do this and we're constant, constantly working in order to enable architecture and get better performance uh, on, on these systems. So ARM contribution to open source community doesn't stop there. So we work on LLVM, we work on GNU, but we are also partnering with other providers, people who do build systems, in order to, to make sure that the entire ecosystem is available on ARM systems. So obviously we work with all the major build systems, uh, whether it's Make, CMake, GNU Make, uh, but we also have collaborations with people like uh, Los Alamos, Lawrence Livermore, who work on SPAC, uh, and we make sure that um, yeah, we are part of this tool chain, so we currently have some projects going on uh, to make sure that the ARM compiler is really part of SPAC, so that if you want to build uh, applications and deploy them, put them in a repository, you can use uh, all the nicest uh, ARM technology in order to do that. Um, in terms of build recipes, um, obviously we work on the middleware in order to build the systems, but we also provide recommendations to people who have their applications. So we've got numerous build recipes to help people compile their applications using the best optimized flags to get the best performance. So we've got several GitHubs, uh, several um, environments that are available where people can just go look at the PDFs and find the best optimization options for their particular applications. We've been working on the top 50 HPC applications that are available, so all your traditional uh, applications such as Grow Max, OpenFORM, etc., all these works. And until, you know, uh, as soon, we, we, we try to upstream as much as possible back to the community, but it usually takes a bit of time. So if you want to find the latest and shiniest, you can go on some of these pages and you will have all the information you need in order to compile with GCC, LLVM, or the ARM compiler for Linux. One of the other projects we're working on is OpenHPC, uh, which is available on SLES, obviously. Um, one of the things that we're doing is that we're making sure that uh, people can easily access uh, all the OpenHPC packages compiled with a reliable and performant uh, compiler for ARM. Um, so we are working very closely with them. Uh, at the moment, I think that the, the latest announcement, which was last week, was about the OpenHPC 1.3.9, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we are, we are part of that, and uh, we are working extremely closely with Carl Schultz and the others uh, to make sure that when OpenHPC 2.0 is released, uh, which will come actually very soon, uh, there will be some more changes. So our collaboration with the OpenHPC community is that we ARM has provided some, some servers to make sure that everything is perfectly tested. Uh, and in collaboration with Linaro, which is uh, one of our partners, um, we're working, we're very active in this space. In terms of OpenMPI, so I imagine that this is not a surprise, but all the major uh, MPI versions are available on ARM. So again, we've got some collaborations going with the national labs uh, and ourselves to make sure that OpenMPI and Pitch and everything uh, are working well. So all these versions should just work out of the box on ARM. You shouldn't have any issue whatsoever with, uh, with this kind of things. In terms of parallel runtime environment, uh, same story. Uh, so we provide full support for everything POSIX related. Um, so for, for most of the SOCs, basically, it's a simple memory hierarchy, so there is nothing very special about it. Uh, but in some other cases, you've got a bit more complex architectures with NUMA nodes, etc. Uh, so we always make sure uh, to, minima to make sure that people have the minimum amount of work to do in order to support these this custom architectures. Um, and actually, everything is going quite well at the moment. Um, Right. I'm going very quick on this slide, I just want to cover as much ground as possible. Uh, but basically the, 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 the key story is just to say that everything works. So in terms of libraries, uh, it's kind of linked with the OpenHPC, but uh, not just. So we support most of the packages, so libraries that you can find out there, uh, whether it's Trillinus, PetC, or things like this, this will work on ARM. Everything is tested, so we again, we work with the, the code teams to make sure that they run the tests on ARM servers uh, and that you know everything goes fine. And at the moment, we've got more than 54 packages uh, of ARM community libraries that are, um, that are supported and that work perfectly fine. Um, in terms of testing and development, uh, so most of the CI CD suites that people use are uh, available with Thunderx 2. 
So Packet.net, which is a cloud provider, and Vern Global have, uh, can provide access to Thunderx2 if you want to run some tests. One thing that is not available, uh, what, what is, that is not shown on this slide, is that actually Amazon has also some Graviton instances. So basically you connect to your, Gravi to, to your Amazon portal and you can spawn using parallel cluster, you can spawn a very simple HPC cluster using uh, the Graviton cores. And then again, you can use this very easily to deploy your CI CD suite uh, and to make sure that everything works. And in terms of resourcing, um, supports the community. So we have very regular engagements uh, and uh, yeah, commercial agreements with partners in order to commit some resources and to, to help people who want to deploy their packages and make sure that they are supported uh, on ARM. Now, if we look at the tools uh, ecosystem, so around performance uh, <coughs> primarily, but also debugging, um, again, uh, we're working with all the ecosystem partners. Uh, in Germany, there are a lot of people who develop uh, software tools, uh, like with Ulich and TU Dresden. So we have some very close relationships with them. Uh, we also work with University of Versailles and Content to make sure that Macao and things like this are all supported on ARM. Basically, what we, what we do is that we try to make sure that the tools, the, 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 the profilers, and the debuggers that you know and that you're used to uh, will work out of the box on ARM. So obviously we've got our own tools, but we also help the community. So typically we've got DDT, which is a parallel debugger. It works on ARM, obviously, it's our, it's our product. Uh, but we also work, work with uh, Rogue Wave and Toolview uh, to make sure that their, their, their tools are also working, working here because we think that it's very healthy to have an ecosystem with as much competition as possible, with as much choice as possible, which is one of the key things that ARM wants to provide. We want to provide choice and innovation uh, in the market. If we go uh, a level further down, so we can look at the performance analysis tools. They all rely on certain data sources. Uh, so we are active on two key aspects. We are active on Puppy. Uh, which is a, basically a performance interface that is traditionally used uh, for HPC. Uh, so we try and make sure that the Puppy is up to date with the latest uh, microarchitectures. We also work with Perf, so we've got some engineers that works closely with the Perf community in order to make sure that uh, all the counters are available and that uh, people can interface their performance analysis tools with these, uh, with these environments to make sure that they get the information they need uh, when they do performance analysis. Um, and in addition to that, we provide a lot of documentation, a lot of tutorials, of webinars and trainings to actually help people leverage all this technology in order to find bottlenecks and improve the performance uh, of their applications. Uh, on ARM. We also have a lot of recipes and scripts, so when people are moving from x86 or somewhere else to, to ARM hardware, one of the common, um, common ob objections that we face is that people are using intrinsics, uh, x86 intrinsics or assembly code, uh, so we've got a few partners like uh, NSIMD and a few tools that people can use in order to pass their applications uh, using static analysis methods, find out where are the calls to intrinsics and things like this, and then translate these into ARM compatible uh, instructions. So one of the things we've done very recently, and I encourage you to, to, to have a look at, I don't know if you're familiar with Gutbolt, uh, but it's called Compiler Explorer. So basically it's a web interface uh, which contains a lot of different uh, compilers. So you connect on the, the website, you type the little code that you want, and the, the website will give you the assembly code. So it's a nice and nifty product. And very recently we have added uh, the ARM compiler for Linux uh, to this web page. So if you want to see what kind of code uh, our compiler can generate, uh, you can just connect on this web page and, uh, and have a look. It's, it's actually quite nice. Uh, so nice little thing. So there we go. So that was uh, what I wanted to cover today. Uh, so it's a lot of ground, there's a lot of information, I've been quite, quite going quite quickly, so, but the bottom line is that if you have any question, uh, you can just ask me, and the key message is that, as you can see, uh, ARM is active in a, in a very broad way, we interact with numerous open source communities, all of the things that you've seen here work on SUSE, uh, which is a great partner, and the Catalyst uh, project that we've been working on. Uh, which are HP systems with Marvel Thunder X2 and SUSE and the entire software stack is a very good demonstrator to show that today ARM technology is mature for HPC. We can, we can go into production with the system and generate some very good science. 
So thank you very much for listening. Any question, don't hesitate. Uh, My details are there. Let's give Patrick a big hand. Will you be around if anybody does have a question, they can come up and... Uh, I will stay here for a few minutes. Stay for thank a few you. minutes. Okay.